Hello, everybody. My name is Juan Carlos, and welcome to OCR Unedited, where we highlight amazing coaches, athletes, and everyday people from the OCR and trail communities for unscripted and unedited conversations. And today, I have the honor of speaking with a tremendous, never mind tremendous, with an amazing female athlete who I greatly admire, and I know most listeners, most listeners do as well, and uh, the queen of OCR. <laughs> 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 Lindsay Webster, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today, Lindsay. Welcome to OCR Unedited. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, make some time here at a busy schedule to speak with me today. Thank you. Of course. It's my pleasure. Can't wait to uh, see my fellow comedians out there on course if the Spartan Canada series happens because we've been, I've been missing my race friends this year. And yeah, I, I know. Fellow so Canadians much. and everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so before we start here... With the intro, the queen of OCR, the legend of OCR, um, you Ooh. get all these titles, you, you know, that people uh, tell you. How, how, do you. how do you feel about that? How do you take that in? How does that sound to you? Um, I don't, like, it's, I'd say a lot of times it's hard to wrap my head around because to me I'm just, I'm just like me doing my thing. Um, <laughs> but also, like, part of the thing, when I first started obstacle racing, part of the reason thing that fueled me was to like make a name for myself in the sport in my own right because growing up I did cross-country skiing and okay. my sister was also a competitive athlete and um, she was probably a lot more competitive about it than I was she trained really hard and everything but everybody would sort of always compare us and I was always Brittany's little sister and then I started obstacle racing and I was yes. Ryan's girlfriend and no wife. And <laughs> so I was just like oh I just want people to like know my name <laughs> which now they do so <laughs> yeah oh you're well known of oh yes <laughs> yeah so once that started happening it was uh I guess that was like all I ever wanted so yeah <laughs> now I have all these other cool titles too so um, yeah it makes me feel pretty great so, Lindsay, I'm interested in knowing how did you get started um, as an athlete? How did you discover OCR and made the transition to become an OCR athlete? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just mentioned I did cross-country skiing. Yes, you did. Up, and I'd always done various sort of competitive um, endurance-based sports. I also did rowing, always cross-country running, but it was like... Yeah. cross training for these other sports that I did and there was always sort of an upper body element in the sports that I did um, when I came into OCR I was actually doing competitive mountain biking at the time which oh, was nice. probably the only one that didn't involve like an upper body aspect but uh once I found OCR it was sort of just I felt like that's what I'd been waiting for it's like what my body was made for because I right. always had a fairly strong upper body and um, I loved the other sports that I did, but like never enough to pursue them beyond like national level competitions. I guess like I never wanted to try to get to the Olympics or anything. Like, like okay. I just wasn't, I loved the sports, but I wasn't inspired enough by them to be like full time athlete in those sports. So and then I found obstacle racing and I was like, this is it. I love this. <laughs> um, when you mentioned cross country, so weren't you you also ran for humber didn't you humberview i did hum and uh, hum humber college yeah humber college the one mm -hmm. up in uh finch and don uh finch yes yeah i went there as well did you no way i went there and i was playing i was playing soccer for the for the for the school cool and oh you i was probably running laps around the field while you were out <laughs> so you know and also funny thing isn't that where you met jesse it is yeah i was just about to say a lot of listeners might actually know jesse bruce he's yes. like an iconic canadian athlete a lot of people really look up to him myself included but yeah him and i were on the same uh, cross-country team i think i was on the team a year before he joined and then he joined uh the second year that i was on the team and yeah oh wow people like just loved him he was team captain in no time and yeah, he's he's a natural born leader. <laughs> he is, and you know what? He's the one that introduced me to OCR. Mm -hmm. Is he? So, yeah, he was the one That's that. Perfect. Yeah, he's the one that told me about Battle Frog and um, and Spartan. Yeah, it was kind of funny how his and I's life 
kind of align like that because I mean you go to college with people they're on your running team and like I we loved our running team it was like our family but then once you graduate like a lot of people part ways you don't always see each other again um, but I remember once I started doing Battle Frog he started his own company which at the time was called Time for War Fitness and now it's sort of evolved into one academy. I still have that shirt the white one. Do you? I still have one too. <laughs> and so occasionally we would go and do his races. And stuff. Yeah, just like paths kept crossing and they still do today. <laughs> it's a small little world. Who would have thought? Like when I realized that you went to Humber and he went to Humber, it's like, wow, my God. And so we what never years were you there? Us. Yeah. Well, I was there. I think I was there 90. I was there ooh, late 90s. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the cross country team and the soccer team practice like at the same time, right? So yeah, literally, like we would be running around the field. The, the yeah. team <laughs> That's right. So I was just curious if like we were there the same years. So if I was literally running circles Who knows? around you. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So I Lizzie, went back a couple times. <laughs> yeah. So can you share with us some of your best finishes and accomplishments uh, in OCR with us? Sure. So. Um, I won OCR World Championships, was it four times? I think it was four times. Last year I couldn't compete, which was a bummer, so uh, I had to sort of like give up my run. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if I would have won because last year was a gnarly year anyway. Um, what else? There was, I've won Spartan World Championships twice in 2017 and 18. Yes, you um, did. Yeah, and... <laughs> That's an accomplishment that I'm really proud of. And then there's, uh, what did you say? US oh, sorry, hold on. <laughs> One sec, I have to put you down. Don't worry. <laughs> there we go. Ryan said something and I was like, I can't hear anything with these headphones on. <laughs> uh, Spartan US National Series. Uh, I've actually won every year since it started. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It's been some good years for me. Every year I finish and I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do better next year? And every year it becomes harder, but um, I manage to at least keep some of the titles. <laughs> so with these accomplishments, like to be, for example, the Spartan World Championship, uh, the championship, you won them twice, 17 and 18. How, how do you, has that synced in yet? To, to, to think that you won a major title twice, back to back. Yeah, the first year it was incredibly surreal. Like I think it took me like a week to fully absorb and I, I would have these, most of the time I just wouldn't even sort of believe it. And then I'd have these moments of clarity and I'd just like walk around with a smile on my face for like weeks. Straight. Um, and then the second year it happened, it was, had been my goal sort of all year long and I couldn't believe that I achieved it again. But um, okay. I would say that those are definitely like two of the happiest days of my life. <laughs> oh my god i remember watching it and it was just inspiring to see you back to back win them it, it was just not just myself a lot of canadians love you for that i mean thank you and, but you know and i'm you know i'm sure that you're gonna go for a third time yeah my goal last year actually was to be the first person ever to win it three times in a row but I mean there's a reason nobody's achieved it yet because it's super hard and uh, last year wasn't my year so, so the target in your <laughs> but yeah I still would like to win it a third time obviously. so the, so the target on your back is big it's huge yeah <laughs> yeah how does it so, feel I, to have a target on your back knowing that a lot of people who haven't been able to accomplish this goal you know, and you have, and now they're targeting for you. Um, I mean, I guess I, it was kind of funny. I remember the year that I transitioned from being like a rookie into a vet. And it's like at the same year that target sort of appeared on my back. When I was like, <laughs> okay, now I'm known as a veteran and I have a massive target. But I think like my, I'd say my career in the sport has sort of evolved with target. So yeah. I guess I uh, have an athlete who just evolved with it, but I would say that like, um, like to to win, um, like I'm so driven just because I want to do it for myself, not for yeah. to defeat the target or for any expectations or anything like that. It's not like I don't do it for the prize money either. I've had races where I actually forget that there's prize money on the table because I just like want to win the 
race so bad. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a perk. <laughs> so, um, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, my, that's too funny. So what does your training schedule look like now? Now it's, I mean, this year's sort of been funny because as I guess, I guess everybody sort of been struggling with this all year long here. We yeah. sort of, um, like you, we thought that the races would start up again in June. And so you start gearing up for your fitness levels for that. And then the races were postponed or canceled. And then it was July and then it was August. They announced that the whole season was like exactly. rescheduled. So then I was like, Oh, time to get ready. And it, now it's sort of like, okay, we're not going to have a season. I know. I know. Oh, you froze on me. So now it's it's just been. Uh, am I back? Yep, you're back. Hello? Okay, there we go. Sorry, I must be going between cell towers or something. As we're That's okay. driving along here. We're going to a friend's wedding. In Ontario, so oh, nice. It sort of worked out this way that I ended up being <laughs> driving while we were, while we had this podcast scheduled. So sorry about that. That's but, okay. Um, I'm here to work around your schedule. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess this year, every, but like now it's sort of just become the year of personal goals. And uh, so I guess I'm just more so training for those. It's probably been a lot more like long distance than previous years have been. Yeah. As opposed to like fast, shorter race speed. It's sort of a lot of the goals that I want to do are like longer. Like they're like around the 12 hour mark and stuff. So lots more like endurance. And, um, yeah, of course. Okay. Than other years. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Have you found that? Um, Just sort it's, of managing it's weird. Without... It's weird. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not having races. And like you said, as of, you know, they start in May um, in Quebec, mm -hmm. I think it starts, you know, everybody's all excited. And all of a sudden yes. with this whole pandemic, it's like one race after another, like a, like a domino effect. Races yeah. just keep you know, keep being postponed, not even post yeah, postponed or canceled. And it's so sad. And it's like all this training for nothing. <laughs> yeah and I don't know about you but like there's definitely been periods for me when it's been hard to stay motivated because I am like well do I have a goal like what am I <laughs> like yeah. I don't really need to train today because there's nothing coming up that I need to be super fit for so yeah, yeah and, and funny thing you know I was having a conversation with Victor Quesada um who you know yeah. well and yeah. so we were talking about that, like all this training and no races. I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's super true. Like, um, I, I found it to be a really good time to sort of just rediscover like why I love to train. Like I never used to call it training. It used to just be exercise and I would do it yeah. because I enjoyed it. But then when you're a professional athlete, it sort of does evolve into like your training and what you have to do that year. And this year has really just been like an exploration again of yeah. why we do it because we enjoy it. It's true. And, you know, for me, I, I, I want to be race ready and I yeah. enjoy training. I love training. And with this whole COVID, it's given me like chunks of time now to be able to train uh, yeah. properly and exactly. without having to rush and I can strategize and plan and everything. So you know, I'm happy for that. That's interesting. So do you think you're probably fitter than you are have been in other years more fit? Um, yes. Because you have more time. Yeah? Yes. And there's no races. Well, I guess no uh, Canada has a Spartan series that has not yet been canceled. So. Well, there's four races and they started September yeah. 19th. But, you know, you know, who's to say, you know, they could be postponed or canceled at any time. We don't know. Right. And so exactly. it's like knock on wood that we still have them because I know the U S doesn't have any, and then we have at least four. Yeah. You're going to come out and crush it then. That's awesome. I'm, That's the plan. I'm so curious, like where I'm at because I've, like I said, I've been doing a lot more endurance yeah. training. So I've probably put in more hours of training than I would other years but a lot less sort of like co2 max or speed based yeah. training so um i'm curious to see like where that will so how do you we do have races how do you feel, I feel you really feel good i feel like yeah if they announced that we had a race tomorrow i would um you would crush it you I, I would be confident that i would still do really <laughs> well i don't know like if i had to race myself from last year at this time of the season like i don't know who would win that race? Me, <laughs> like the 2019 Lindsay or 2020 Lindsay? I'm not sure. It's, uh, I don't know, but that's always the question. So, 
Um, um, has moving to Quebec and living in the mountains had an impact on your training now? If so, how? Yes, definitely. I would say, um, like, yeah, it's definitely catered to the endurance training that I've been doing. Like, from a training perspective, the whole year has sort of just come together really well because yeah. I'm so excited to get out and explore and train every day that it's so easy to put in the hours. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of nice this year that I don't have to do, like, as focused training and I can just be like, oh, I'm just going to go for, like, a three-hour bike ride or something like that. Um, so, so you know, yeah, it's it's catered to, like, my my personal goals really well, <laughs> I'd say. And that's great. I love the pictures that you post up. I truly do. Thank you. It's so inspiring because it makes me want to go out <laughs> and run and train. The only problem is that where you're at, you got Mother Nature, beautiful greenery. I go outside, I got buildings, streets, street lights. I don't where have that. Where are you that. exactly? Where are you based <laughs> I, out of? I have to travel out of the city. Uh, about an hour just okay. to go get myself into the you know in, into into a forest or trail and, and and be able to enjoy a nice good run mm -hmm. but i bet you appreciate every single one of them oh yeah <laughs> when you do get it oh yeah. my god i truly never do. a bad day yeah oh it's never a bad day only when i go for a road run around here it's like oh my god i know the streets so well it's like so boring yeah. oh god exactly. i should just go home and chill <laughs> yeah that's how i felt like with moving this year like it's there's uh there haven't been a lot of bad days because every day i'm just like appreciative of, of the new scenery in the mountains and yeah it's been <sighs> lucky you hard to stop <laughs> <laughs> so sticking to the topic of training i consider you to be an elite ocr athlete but i also consider you to be a trail runner i mean how do you strategize and plan for your trail and ocr training um, I would say, so, I mean, if you think about an obstacle race, it really is like 95% a trail race and 5% just obstacles that are <laughs> sort of added yeah. into it. So I would say basically that I train like a trail runner would. And then, um, I, in my strength training, like I'll just add in a lot more sort of obstacle specific things. Um, and then coming into race season, I'll do some workouts where I'll like do a running interval and finish it with. Uh, 15 burpees or something like that because it really gets your body used to sort of like buffering your lactic acid I guess yeah that makes sense yeah so I find that is quite helpful like to get your body used to um, when the race season starts and you're not used to running really hard and then having to do an obstacle and keep running really hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> so with COVID-19 I mean it's impacted everybody in the whole entire race season for all of us. Um, as a professional athlete, how has this changed your life? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I think uh, Ryan and I are pretty blessed because, I mean, he's also a professional OCR athlete. So yes, he is. for us, it's been it's definitely, like, devastating. I would seek to see how it's impacted the rest of the world and it makes me really sad for people who are in countries where they were stuck inside yeah. and I would watch like especially the trail running community from overseas who I follow and stuff like have to train in their basement on a treadmill for months on end I was just like oh my gosh I don't know how they're doing it. <laughs> especially not knowing if you have a goal in mind or anything but for Ryan and I like we live in a pretty remote place and in terms of our daily schedule I wouldn't say it necessarily changed that much and then like I did mention like we were so excited just to sort of explore our new territory around us because we just moved yeah. to Quebec that um, it was actually kind of nice not to be on the road as much like normally once race season starts we're not home a whole lot so it was really nice just to like have time at home to settle in and so I think um, yeah I kind of felt for the rest of the world but in terms of how it impacted Ryan and I we we came out of it about as lucky as you could be <laughs> yeah no it's yeah. true it's true yeah oh man I yeah. saw uh, a social media this morning or I saw on social media this morning sorry I can't even talk today um, but you registered, I have those days. We all do. <laughs> <laughs> that you registered for this Canada, what is it? The Obstacle Sports Canada Virtual Challenge. Is this right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I did. Have you, I mean, you've done virtual races this season. I have. I've year. done a bunch of uh, 
the world OCR one. More so just testing them out for them before they're okay. released than actually like competing um, in the world so you can release it, if that makes sense. But um, yeah. yeah, I registered for that one because I haven't done one in a little while and the format to me actually seemed pretty fun. Like I was like, oh, yeah. three hours. Um, like that'll be a good challenge. It's, I mean, so basically it's a five kilometer loop and you do as many laps as you can in, in three, three hours. hours. Yeah, right. and after you finish every lap, you have to like do, I guess, body weight exercises, like obstacles. That's right. Uh, various exercises, I guess, they're going to mention. But yeah. um, what are your thoughts on virtual races? Do you like them or not? I don't normally like them. For some reason, this one I'm really excited for. And then also yeah. when Matt Davis had his ultra virus race, I was like pretty excited for the first one of those. We, although everybody else was running these like fat, sorry flat five mile loops um, <laughs> and ryan and i were just like oh let's go see how much fruit we can get in uh 12 hours we d we said we didn't even want to do all 12 hours so we actually ended up doing seven but we basically just like went up and down this utterly massive steep hill the whole time just to like see how much <laughs> vertical ascent we could accumulate so i don't know it's fun to have um i guess like goals and i think yeah. for this one because it's gonna be flat it'll be like a little out of my element and there are some like fast canadian girls who will actually like challenge me and i don't know i guess i'm just like a lot of the uh virtual races i haven't been excited for because i don't like the f like 30 minute format where it's like That's right. probably 50 percent obstacles and 50 percent like running in a really short circle but um okay. this one is like it'll be hard and i'm gonna be smashed by the end of it and i love that feeling when you're you just, yeah you're really tired at the end of the day so, yeah <laughs> it, it seems really like yeah it's, it seems like a lot of fun really interesting um yeah. and so you know i'm glad that you registered and you're gonna do it i may be doing it with a friend of mine fun. Uh, yeah we may be doing it we don't know yet i uh, love that you're actually doing it with somebody that's a great idea yeah we're gonna hit, find somebody to do it yeah we're gonna hit a trail up uh, up in uh hardwood ontario yeah i know hardwood cool yeah, is it so flat gonna, or is it hilly or it's in what's the name i just went blank oh yeah hardwood ontario there, there's a couple of trails there we're gonna hit one cool. um i don't know if you know ian saint laurent uh i know the name okay so I, yeah yeah, so we're going to see if we can do it just because on that day, it's my dad's birthday. So I'm trying to vary, like, which one is more important? <laughs> yeah, you can fit both. You'll just be, like, really, uh, you'll have earned your birthday cake by the time. Yeah, the hey, dad, I'll be right back. I got to go to the store. I'll be back in three hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, like, uh, run the race and then have, have some dinner with him that night. And then bring some flowers and a box of chocolates here, dad. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah it's always better when you can spend the whole day together so that, Lindsay will we like see you both. yeah will we see you at any of the Spartan races in Canada this year yes uh I would like to do all four of them I don't honestly nice. I feel like Ryan and I might have a conflict with Ottawa but the other three we're definitely going to be at so, yeah. Fingers so what they happen Oh, nice. so we're talking Red Deer, um, Blue Mountain, and yeah. I think it's the one in Montreal, the last one in, in yeah. October. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really nice because we'll be able to drive to all of them, except for well, Red Deer, I guess. But, um, oh, you're driving yeah, like to Red Ottawa, Deer? Yeah, like Ottawa. We might. Um, but then, I mean, the other three, like Ottawa, Montreal, and Toronto, are all driving distance to Quebec. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Great, great for us. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to do all three of them. I mean, all four of them. Cool. So, uh, oh, I'll see you there. That's yeah, we will def I will definitely see you guys there. Can't wait to watch you crush it. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll bring my pom-poms. <laughs> um, during a race, athletes tend to get in their own heads. Uh, mental training is just as critical as physical training. What is your approach to mental training? Like, What do you think about what do you think about during races and do you ever get down on yourself and how do you combat this? Yeah. I mean, I think, well, oh, there's so many different parts to this question, right? Because for me, a lot yes. of the mental aspect is before the race even starts and dealing with those start line nerves and um, like 
once the race starts, part of being an obstacle racer is like, I think what makes a really good obstacle racer is like grit and adversity because so many things can go wrong during the race that you have to like overcome. And uh, I, so it was interesting actually, Ryan and I started working with this sports psychologist a couple of years ago. His name is Graham Roberts. He's actually based in the UK. Um, and him and Ryan would chat on Instagram all the time. And he sort of eventually said like, oh, you know, I'm a sports psychologist. Like if you and Lindsay ever want to like work with somebody, let me know. And Ryan and I talked about it and we were like, yeah, you know, like at this point, when you're an elite athlete after a certain point, it sort of becomes whatever you can do to eke out that extra 1%. Um, yeah. And we are like, well, let's give it a shot. Like, why not? And uh, so one of the most interesting exercises that Grimm, I think, ever did with me is that he had me write down basically like everything that could go wrong during a race and what yeah. I would do in that situation and after going through that exercise I realized that like at this point I think I was already three years into my race career and I had already experienced every single one of those things short of like breaking a bone during the race or something like that um, and I like got through it and finished and once you sort of like stare that in the face and realize that you already know what you would do and you sort of just do your best on any given day no matter what circumstances are dictated at you like yeah yeah like it I don't know I always think about that on the start line and it just makes me a whole lot less nervous I guess because <laughs> that's what makes me nervous is like thinking about all the things that can go wrong right yeah, yeah so. um, what are some of the things that you think about when you're racing and uh and you're facing some difficult obstacles. What are some of the things that you say to yourself to motivate yourself to keep moving forward? Um, <laughs> I don't know. There was a, a couple like wet races that we had and I struggled. I kept having like falling off obstacles and having to do penalties or something like that. And I remember before one race being really nervous about the obstacles because I knew it was going to rain and uh, I talked to Ryan about it beforehand, and Ryan gave me a saying. He he said, just uh, come into the obstacle and say, like, grip the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my language. So then every time I'd approach an obstacle during that race, I would just, like, say that to, my, to myself in my head. And, and I finished every obstacle. So I don't know. It's just, like, little things like that. Yeah. Oh, man, that's I funny. remembered it ever since. Yeah. <laughs> you still do it? I still do it, yeah. Um, I think I went through a phase where, like, if I thought that I was going to fall off, I would sort of just, like, give up. But that helped me to sort of overcome that. And now I'm just, like, I I will grip the crap out of it until it throws me off or, like, something goes wrong. But I will, like, try my darndest to hold on. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. The next time yeah. I see you race and you're coming to an obstacle, I don't know exactly what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what is your approach to nutrition? Um, I think like we have pretty like well-rounded diets, I would say. We don't, we've, I don't know, Ryan and I eat everything. Um, we drink beer, we eat dessert. Like we've tried cutting out things like dairy or gluten to see if it has impacted us positively or negatively and okay. didn't like really notice a difference but found it stressful to have to think about all the time so like <laughs> because we weren't noticing any positive impact but it was like mentally draining um, yeah. we just yeah. like didn't really consider it worth it so I would say that yeah we eat everything like in moderation but for exactly. sure after um, yeah like after a race I know I should you know, eat healthy things to help me recover, but I definitely eat fries and drink beer. So, There's but I save it for that. race days. Yeah. <laughs> like I save it for race days. I don't eat like that every day of the week. We eat a lot of mostly home cooked food and fruits and vegetables are like a big staple in our diets. But uh, yeah, but I don't shy away from like rewarding myself. Yeah. You know what? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Being an athlete, there's nothing wrong with having a beer, but everything, like you said, everything in moderation. I mean, yeah, exactly. don't go and drink, don't go buy a two for and thinking that's going to be all right for your next day's training. 
No, exactly. Yeah. I do. Uh, yeah. Like I said, we drink beer too, but I like, there are days when I'm like, oh, tomorrow's workout's going to be really hard. And I like want to perform well during that. So I'll think the night before about like eating extra calories and not drinking <laughs> beer, yeah. Yeah. things like that. And like before race days, um, like we definitely don't drink alcohol. Um, but yeah, I, I like to like maintain, a, I'd say, a healthy weight too. I grew up around uh, actually watching in high school, like a lot of people I was surrounded by, like really good athletes uh, came, came down with eating disorders and I would watch them gotcha. perform really well for a little bit and then crash and burn. And so I think I was pretty lucky to be exposed at a young age to like the importance of the fact that lighter isn't necessarily always faster like exactly. Yes, I agree. For you as an athlete. So, yeah. So um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, how do you feel for races? Um. So. For example, how do you to... feel? I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. So, how would you okay. feel uh, for your for a race? Let's say coming September 19th. Right. So, like, we, like I said, we would just eat our normal diets and stuff, yeah. and then probably the week of the race I would, or like three days leading up to the race, I would just like wouldn't drink alcohol. Um, just make sure I was like definitely getting in enough calories. Like you don't want to come into a race at a calorie deficit. Not that, I don't pay that much attention to stuff, but like I just make sure that I'm not hungry. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> the morning, I'd say the night before the race, we usually eat pasta with like some, some sort of protein. Yeah. I'm like or like rice, I guess. Um, yeah. Oh my God, you're making me hungry. Yeah, I know, right? And then the morning, <laughs> <laughs> the morning of the race, we actually normally eat rice for breakfast, which sounds strange, but um, it was actually like a guy we work with who's a really well-known nutritionist, and he's the one who recommended that to us. So we actually like nice. boil white rice, and we mix in uh, coconut oil, Ooh. almond butter, and a bit of salt. Which so it sounds like funny, but it's actually delicious. And then. So like you get when you're racing, I guess your body uses carbs from the race and then you have like healthy fat stores from the coconut oil and all the butter and then sodium from the salt. So yeah, it's like kind of a perfect storm of race food. <laughs> race oh my fuel. God. Now I got that food thought in my head. So after this, I got to go eat. <laughs> <laughs> you should try it before a race. Make that one morning. It's actually like really delicious. Like, you know what? I, I, I may have to take you up on that and ask you for the, for the recipe. Yeah. When it comes to recovery, when do you, when, when do you know you should, you should take a step back from pushing so hard? And uh, what does your recovery tend to look like? Um, I'm pretty diligent with stretching for sure like after especially hard workout days like I will always stretch um, mostly because I I like want to be running still when I'm 70 or 80 if possible and I just think like I had a friend who's a doctor and she said to me imagine if you started now and every single day of your life you were to stretch like what a difference it will make by the time you know you're like 70 you get older so, yeah yeah and I always just sort of remembered that so um even though I'll be like tired and hungry and sweaty and not want to stretch. <laughs> um, I'll like make myself do at least five minutes. A lot of days I'll get really into it. But. And then at night, a lot of nights, like when I'm watching Netflix with Ryan, we'll have rolling sessions. I'd say like probably three days a week we'll roll. Um, and what else? Recovery. Yeah, like I just was camping in the van for a week and I was putting in a lot of running miles. Yes, um, you were. Which was super fun. But then... I got home and I made sure I took like two days totally off because I was super tired. And then yeah. um, the next day I biked because I wanted it to be like low impact on my joints. And then today I tried running for the first time and <laughs> I took a couple steps and I was like, Oh, like my bones. Hurt. It wasn't <laughs> it wasn't like my muscles or anything, but I was like, Oh, I can feel like that that could turn into a shin splint or like my left foot is sort of like hurting a little bit. So uh -oh. um, so I just stopped and I biked instead. Um, so yeah, it's just like listening to your body. Like you that. gotta listen to the body. Can't go against yeah, exactly. it. Yeah, so I'll probably take another couple of days now and uh, just try to bike instead of <laughs> a run. It's I think it's really good to have like various forms of cardio. Like if you have access to a bike and you can offset your cardio 
um, so that's not just running. Do things like swimming or in the winter, like snowshoeing or cross country skiing. Those kind of things are like. Yeah. No, I agree yeah. with you. I definitely agree with you. So yeah. now, do you have any memorable moments, either inspirational or funny, uh, from your race career? Oh my gosh, there's so many. Let's go with uh, some, let's go with the funny ones. <laughs> I remember at like the first race this year uh, in Jacksonville, all the girls were like. We started the race together and was like running really hard and we, we it was like one kilometer into the race we started running through like a deep it was like a waist deep uh, stream basically okay. and uh, all the girls just started complimenting each other on how nice our butts looked <laughs> 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 we're all like wearing spandex and <laughs> yeah we're all like we look great <laughs> so i don't know it's like everybody thinks that we're all so serious during races and stuff but like we do talk and joke around a lot of the time but of course too as much as you're able to talk on your yeah um, <laughs> yeah that is awesome yeah, um, a lot of inspirational moments because I think we're surrounded by pretty inspirational people. So, oh, that's so awesome. Like that. Yeah, I mean, Eco Challenge was just really so uh, on Amazon Prime. So it's been really cool to watch both Ryan and Rhea Koval like out there crushing this eight day long adventure race. Super inspiring. Like watching Rhea run World's Toughest Mudder uh, a couple of years really inspiring because uh, Ryan would see her out on course and be like, oh, we're like 19 hours into this race and she's still running up the hill. Like, she's a beast. <laughs> and yeah, I would be I mean, like hobbling along, not even able to run anymore. <laughs> I, I agree with you. Greya did an amazing job. It's like, I mean, yeah. she's with four men. Yeah. And yeah. These, they're all incredible. And you got little Rhea there. And to see her pull her own weight with her strength and you know that dedication and drive is just amazing well we knew she would because we watched her at world toughest winter a couple of years just like go and go and then uh so bob and scott the other two guys on their team didn't know raya at all but ryan kept saying like i know this girl she, she'll be really good like you guys should consider her but bob and scott were like well we know this other girl who like has done adventure races before, like we should consider her. And uh, they ended up choosing Rhea and uh, they all said that they actually think she was like the strongest girl in the whole race out there, not just their team, but like the, all the teams. Um, and you know, I know that when they finish, she's been getting all sorts of requests from various teams to do races. <laughs> and stuff, so, yeah. And funny enough, she's not Canadian. No. But I think the rule is that so three of three of the members on your team have to be from the same country. That's right. And the other person doesn't necessarily have to be. So like I guess she was. They're all all three of them were Canadian, and then Rhea was. Uh, I don't know whether she raced under Slovenia or USA. But. So now everybody wants <laughs> Rhea on their team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I think awesome. in in their case, like the key to success, I think, or one of the big keys is to have positivity. And I think every single member on their team was just like so positive. Um, so there wasn't any like anybody bringing negative energy and bringing it, the whole team down. And, yeah, no. Yeah. It's, to me, it's unfortunate. So I don't know that she'll switch. Yeah, it's unfortunate that we didn't see a lot of the Canadian, the, the, the Canadian, our Canadian teams uh, on TV. It was very. Yeah, very... you obviously watched it. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, no, I loved it. <laughs> Now, yeah. with you, did you have special viewing to see it from beginning to end without any interruptions? Or were you like many other Canadians where we had to go on Prime Video and watch yeah. episode per episode? And it's, I swear to God, I could not wait to see the next episode once it was done. It was like, oh my I God. Know. No, I wasn't. I mean, obviously they came home from the race and I got to hear how they finished and I got to hear some of the stories. Um, which was like really hard to keep a secret for so long. Of course, everybody, like all our friends and family wanted to know how they finished and we couldn't even tell them. So, oh. um, <laughs> yeah, so it's been like hard to keep that secret for so long. And now I'm glad I can talk about it. But I watched it just like everybody else. Like I've been waiting to watch this for so long. And I was like, I'm going to watch it. And of course, when it was released, actually, Ryan was away on a biking trip. 
Um, so I was like, oh, I'll wait till he comes home oh, and I'll no. watch it with him because I want to get all like the insider commentary on like what, how that section of the course is going for them and stuff. And uh, so Ryan finally comes home and I've been waiting days for him. And he says to me like, oh, I might just watch it like alone when I'm riding the bike trainer. Or something <laughs> I was like, no, you won't. <laughs> I've been waiting. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so now we're into it. We're only on this like third episode of it. So, yeah, we'll get I there. binge watched it with me Did and you? the wife. We saw it in a couple of days. Uh, I was done. I think it was two days or three. I was done. Yeah. I just couldn't wait. So, so, so it was one of those things where thank you COVID, because <laughs> I would wake up the next morning and was like, I gotta get. Sorry, I gotta have my breakfast. I gotta turn on the TV. Gotta watch my episodes. Then I'll go train. Yeah, yeah, we're savoring it, and like I'll pa- like we'll watch a section of the episode, and Ryan will start telling me something, and like we'll pause it so that he can like tell me stories. And, uh, so that yeah. you'll never finish the episode because he's telling you all kinds of things. Well, it just takes us like two hours to get through every episode. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we just have been watching like one episode a night. Kind of so here's a question: What is your biggest inspiration? Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know. That's, I like pull inspiration from all sorts of things, but I think probably a big one in terms of like staying fit for me is just scenery. Like it's when I first met Ryan, my long run was like an hour long and it's just evolved over the years. And to me being a professional athlete and like more sort of long backcountry adventures and stuff. And now like, I think one of the big things that I pull inspiration from is just the places that my feet can take me, which um, you wouldn't be able to access by like a uh, car or even, even by bike. Like it's literally places that you can only get by foot that if I wasn't as fit as I was, like I would never be able to see them or experience these things. And I've yeah. seen so many incredible things. So, uh, so yeah, I think that, that inspires me to like keep like really good face fitness and endurance. You know what? When you and Ryan met, on your first date, did you guys go for a trail run? What did we do? Um, I don't know, like I don't really remember what our first <laughs> date was to be honest. But I I know that um he did take. I think our first date was basically like a camping trip, and oh, was uh, it? we did this trail, and we hiked it over three days. And I just I remember like we would hike about eight hours a day, and by the end of each day, my feet would be so sore and aching, and it was like all I could do to finish those days um but like I loved it and it's funny because now I actually set the fastest known time record on that trail this year and I did it all in one day which was a huge scary thing for me to it's like the longest trail run I've ever done for sure <laughs> but, thank you yeah it took me about 12 hours <laughs> but yeah it's just it's kind of cool to think about like yeah seven years I think it was seven years ago when him and I first started dating like yeah, it was like, <laughs> it took me three days to do it, and now I can do it in one. <laughs> so we talked about mental struggle. Uh, how about physical struggles? Have you endured that you've endured during your uh, your race course, and how have you managed to overcome them? Um, yeah, I've been pretty lucky, actually, until last year, like right before Spartan World Championships. I'd never been injured before. So last year I got a stress fracture in my foot um, and I raced Spartan yeah. World Championships with like a stress fracture, which people didn't really know about until after the race, I guess. But um, I'd say it was definitely more of a mental struggle than a physical struggle, but I'm pretty lucky that I haven't had a whole lot of physical struggles <laughs> throughout my career. Yeah. That's pretty much sums it up. So, yeah. yeah, I remember when uh, you, uh, you got injured. So you're okay. You're good now. I mean, I see yeah. you running now. You seem to be in very good physical health, so that's great. Yeah, it's. A, I mean, everybody who's had stress fractures know it sort of lingers in the back of your mind. Like anytime you feel a twinge, you're like, yeah. "Oh no, is it gonna come back?" Or like, I used to just be like, "Oh, my body's invincible." And like, <laughs> uh, I think as like athletes, we're always trying to find our limits and like toe the line of where those limits yeah. are. And uh, and I found them last year, and I learned from it that had since like backed off a bit um, in terms of like running mileage and stuff yeah so I don't know but it's like a weird blessing in disguise because 
uh, yeah. you do learn a lot from it, right? So. Yeah, good. And like I said before, it's good that uh, you and the both of you are good. You guys are good physical health. So, yes. you know, knock on wood for that. In, um, in, in addition to racing, you are involved in quite a bit of uh, charity work. What is some of your most memorable work you have done? Definitely going to India uh, with back-to-back -back ministries. So people probably see the OCR gives back tent at uh it's been at world champ or ocr world championships the last i think five years six years ever since like the birth of <laughs> ocr world championships uh he's been there so uh yeah after like hanging out with that team and talking to them at that race and stuff like uh there was one year that i was like this actually sounds really amazing i'd like to go on one of these trips so went to india and i got to like hang out with the kids there at uh one of their campuses or orphanages and uh just like do some work with them and i'd say that was i like i think i went there not knowing what to expect and expecting to like inspire the kids but instead i actually learned so much from that trip from them, uh, which was really cool and so another friend of ours actually has a an orphanage in kenya and we were oh, supposed nice. to go yeah we were supposed to go this year um do like a fundraising trip um, where we hiked people up to the top of Mount Akinkagwa and like we would basically, Ryan and I would like basically be the guide so to speak. Um, oh nice. With somebody else from their team and then uh, like the money from that trip would all just go towards uh, the orphanage. So but of course then COVID happened and they actually ended up having another baby so it just it like wasn't the year <laughs> for it to yeah, happen but exactly. hopefully next year so yeah oh that's great that's awesome Aww. yeah now yeah. do you have anything <laughs> special planned you would like to share or mention um anything special planned i don't know not really like it's sort of just <laughs> taking this year as a as it's thrown at me i really do i want to do a thing where i try to live uh for like a month with like zero waste so no like garbage or recycling or plastic usage or anything but um since we moved uh i had a goal of that to do that this summer and sort of like share the experience with people and like big takeaways that i learned from it like easy changes that people can make in their life that would make like a good environmental impact but uh, then, of course, during COVID, everything shut down. And because we've just moved, I'm like trying to find places instead of just the grocery store that I can go to like buy nuts that aren't sold in plastic or like, like there's stores like that that yeah. exist. You can just bring a jar and like fill it up. And but I, I still have to like discover where they are around our new home. Hmm. And, uh, because everything was closed for so long, I wasn't able to. But uh, yeah, I'm sort of, I'm like the past month I've been a little bit it might end up happening in the winter instead of the summer time we'll see how it goes but <laughs> yeah you're i mean it seems like you're always doing something man you're always up to something yeah it's i don't know it's fun like <laughs> i have a lot of things that i guess motivate me outside of racing that are like really uh, fun hobbies that i draw energy from so, yeah, that's awesome yeah. that's great so yeah. do you have any shout outs to anyone or any brands you represent um, yes, I guess my sponsors, of course, uh, of Human, course. which makes Beat Elite, they've been my longest, longest time sponsor, and, uh, Spartan Race, um, oh my gosh, just, it's, like, really cool this year to see how everybody sort of stuck by us with, uh, this whole pandemic, because, yeah. obviously, like, as a pro athlete, um, I've structured my contracts in a way, a way that a lot of the times, like, I don't have to, like, advertise on social media for them or anything so if you see me doing it it's because i want to like it's not because i'm contractually obligated actually okay um which i think for a lot of athletes they are but uh i'm pretty oh. lucky but then i felt bad this year because like i can't just go to races and like represent them by wearing their logo or like word of mouth because there are no races so uh, <laughs> i've been trying to do a little bit more for them via social media and stuff this year. but i just like want to say how much i appreciate them all sticking by me and riverbend yeah. cbd who's the movie sponsor this year felt bad for him because he like picked up a bunch of 
professional athletes and <laughs> sponsored us and then <laughs> none of us were able to race but uh we, we made it work so yeah they're all amazing you know here's a question for you so i've noticed also that there's a lot of young talent a lot of young athletes female and male athletes that are coming in uh new mm -hmm. to the sport of ocr and some that are existing that want to excel any training tips for them that you can share um, what, would you, what, what would you what would you say like i always say to people who are coming into the sport like just have fun but i think if you really want to excel in the sport like one of the biggest things that you could do is just to go do a race and then after it's over reflect on it and think about like where your strengths and weaknesses are and then wherever your weaknesses lie try and incorporate them into your training to like get better at those weaknesses um, which it's funny because nobody like wants to work on their weaknesses that's not fun like we enjoy doing what we're good at Yeah. Nobody wants to do what they're bad at. <laughs> But I think that's like, if you're really it's looking true. to excel in the sport and make it to the next level, that's like kind of the key to success. So. Okay, people, there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if people are looking to find out more about you, where should they go? Probably my Instagram. Um, you know, I'm that's trying true. to get better at this whole TikTok thing, but I just can't, can't wrap my head around it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> are you it's funny. yeah i, I, I don't know why we're supposed to be millennials i don't know <laughs> maybe i'm in trouble then <laughs> yeah i'm totally gonna be like my parents who are like when new technology is released I'm gonna i don't like, know ah, i don't know how to like where's the power button <laughs> i don't know google the instructions i don't know <laughs> yeah definitely um yeah but i would say my instagram page which is Lin lindy don webster lindsay spelled with an a a y Yeah. Um, okay, so we've come to that part of the of the show, which is the end. I yeah. mean, it's been such a true pleasure speaking with you, Lindsay, today. I mean, I learned so much, and you've inspired me all throughout your race career. Um, just the way you carry yourself, being an amazing athlete, you know, keeping your head up and always smiling, whether it's good or bad. Um, just that that Canadian-ness about you. Um, it's just- Thank you, that's a huge compliment when everybody, whenever somebody says that you have like Canadianisms. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, you know what? And you've helped me as well as you inspired me to go out and train and, uh, and you and Ryan, the both of you, you guys are just amazing, amazing athletes. Um, Thank you. I'll let him know. He's right here beside me. Yeah, he's right there. I mean, <laughs> Obviously, I, I, I've had fun, fun, so we can't hear you. <laughs> I wish you and I wish the both of you the very best in your training. And hopefully, I will see you out there in the race course. Well, I mean, I won't be racing against you. <laughs> But hopefully, But, that means that I can cheer for you. So. And yeah, vice versa. I cannot wait to yeah. see you and finally get to talk to you in person. Um, yes. uh, Thank you for the listeners and everybody listening. I hope you guys learned as much as I have, um, you know, have a little of your own inspiration to get out there and get training. And then Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on, for making time to speak with me. Have yourselves you. a It's lovely day. Uh, and I hope I get to have you on soon. Yes, definitely. Thanks for keeping me company on my long drive. <laughs> Thank you so much and say hello to Ryan and take care. And everybody, take care, guys. Have a good day. Take care.